Hello, hello, welcome back. In this video, we are taking a look at Intuitive Surgical. It is a company that was suggested by one of our viewers and subscribers uh, of the channel and this tool. And uh, I thought it's an interesting company actually, and I kind of wanted to dedicate a video to talk a little bit about it. Now, Intuitive Surgical is actually down about 40% uh, in the last year, pretty much. And it's a healthcare company that this sector can do well if there is a recessionary environment although it has fallen and fallen off a cliff really as well as the rest of the market and it's down to um, about 200 bucks right now on the pre-market in the pre-market that's because uh, it released its earnings we're going to examine that it actually caused a drop uh, a drop at the company's stock price and it may actually give us a potentially better entry point if we actually are looking to enter the company now if you take a look at our stock news module here in the tool you will see that uh, uh, there is uh, there is some discussion about um, uh, the Fed aggressiveness. This is an overall uh, pretty much news piece that you see in multiple stocks right now and uh, it's part of the stock news uh, feed. But uh, overall you will see that the, companies, uh, has, uh, the company has had uh, earnings and revenues uh, miss here and it has fallen uh, more than 13% at some point after Q2 results uh, fall short. Now we will examine these in detail, see what happened with the results. I do have an article here which talks about the intuitive surgical earnings revenue miss in Q2. So let's see what happened here. Uh, that was reported yesterday. Intuitive Surgical announced earnings per share of $1.14 uh, on a revenue of $1.52 billion. And analysts uh, anticipated uh, 1.2 in terms of an EPS, so it's a little bit lower than expected on a revenue of 1.56, also lower than expected here. And this actually caused the miss in uh, pretty much a miss in on earnings, and this is why the stock is actually down about uh, 12 or 13 percent. Right now, we can take a look at the metrics here, which kind of shows us what is happening on the pre-market. It's about 12 percent down. Now let's go back here. You will see that. Uh, Intuitive Surgical follows other major major healthcare sector earnings this month. Now United Health uh, had an earnings beat here on uh, July 15th, and J&J um, &J had beat expectations on Tuesday with second quarter EPS of 2.59 on revenue of 24.02. So they did a little bit worse than uh, some of the competitors here or some of the people in the healthcare sector, some of the companies, but. The thing is, uh, this uh, could, as um, you know, as um, an investor, give us a potential opportunity here. As new investors, especially not really holding the stock, it may be worthwhile to examine the financials. And this is exactly what we're doing next. Now, the first thing that we see here is that the PE ratio and price to free cash flow seem to be relatively elevated here, 48 and 46.5. You would want much less, especially for a healthcare company here. You would wor definitely wor want less uh, P and price to free cash flow. Now they are similar to each other, which means that the company probably turns uh, free cash flow at a, at a good rate in terms of its net income. Actually converts that to free cash flow at, at a steady rate, looks like it. We will examine that, of course. But the problem is that it looks expensive. We will, sometimes this, this may not be accurate. But we will determine that when we take a look at the exact financials and also our stock evaluation tool, which will give us an amount to pay for this stock. Now, the outstanding shares are actually up a little bit, not tremendously, but 7%. It's not negligible, but it's not a tremendous increase in terms of the, you know, of the outstanding shares count. But it's still increasing and it's a picture that you don't like to see. You want the stock, pretty much the outstanding shares, to decrease in terms of their volume here so that your stock is actually worth more intrinsically it has more value and practically speaking as well now the company doesn't seem to be having quite a lot of debt here probably very little debt frankly we will examine that of course when we take a look at the total liabilities and the free cash flow it seems like the total liabilities, liabilities are very low here and uh, they have been increasing their revenue net income you can kind of see how this has been increasing and the rate pretty much uh, last year seems to be a pretty, pretty good year for them and uh, five-year total equity growth also increasing here. A little bit of um, an increase is um, an increase of outstanding shares is causing that total equity growth, but overall it has been increasing very nicely through the years. Now the net income margin of the company is high, is about 28% right now, and this is uh, something that you love to see. And uh, the return on equity is about 14%. So th things are looking healthy here. But let's examine some finer details in terms of the statements of the company. The income statement here, you, you will see that uh, the company was doing 3.1 billion and then 
they reached 5.71, almost doubling their revenue here, a little bit less, but uh, very healthy and it keeps increasing very nicely. It's only 2020 where it actually went down a little bit in terms of the revenue growth. Now, in terms of net income from 660 million to 1.7 billion, another nice uh, increase here. Uh, they did have a bad year in 2020, it looks like overall, which actually caused a decline in net income, but now it's getting increased again at, and actually surpassing 2019. So it looks like 2020 was uh, an odd year for them. That doesn't seem to be continuing and it's nice to see. Now the balance sheet of the company, we wanted to examine the total liabilities. Remember 1.6 billion here is what they're currently having. And um, the free cash flow of last year was about one in terms of its multiple to total liability. So it's going to be about 1.6 uh, billion, maybe a little bit more actually, which is tremendous. It's really good. And the total equity of the company from 4.7 billion to almost 12, tripling itself uh, about and uh, that's another great thing to see about the company. You love to see that, uh, the total equity being uh, growing for the company. And uh, still, they do get quite some from you know, issuing shares. That's not a nice thing to see, of course, for a stockholder. But 7%, again, it may not be too uh, worrisome uh, for, of an increase in terms of the stock price. Now, I did take a look at uh, the insider trades and senator trades uh, before I started this video. I, I examined them and I didn't see something that uh, required any caution here. You, the usual stuff, for the most part, it's awards. Uh, you, you would see here the sales are very little, the direct sales. But overall, they are mostly awarded uh, from uh, the company, really, to officers and uh, pretty much directors and people who are uh, executive pretty, pretty much. And in terms of the senators here, there is a little bit more selling than uh, the previous six months, uh, but overall it's about the same picture here. You can kind of see the absolute numbers as well. If you have access to this tool, you can see exactly what is going on here with uh, um, you know, who bought what who bought what, and who sold what pretty much. But overall you're kind of seeing sort of like a selling, um, sort of like some selling happening right now. Um, for the most part, uh, this is why all of these are actually red here. And the only purchase here, I believe, happened yeah, over here uh, back in uh, February for Cathy Manning here. Okay, so it's uh, worth while noting that the company has had quite some split tax, uh, actually, which means that it have, they have potentially been performing very well in the past few years. When you see these kinds of splits, uh, they only had a reverse one back in 2003, but overall these are splits, uh, normal splits, which means that the company's stock price at some point was high, and so the one share was converted to three shares, and this happened twice, generally indicating that the company's stock price has been growing at a level where the board decides to actually cut down on that uh, price, that stock price, so, that, uh, so to make it more affordable for people to, to purchase is what is going on there, and this is why it's happening company is not paying any dividends here. So the next step, the next thing that we're going to do is take a look at our stock evaluation tool and decide what kind of price to pay for this one. Now, the revenue growth, uh, generally speaking, has been at about uh, 15 to 20%. Now, the average, uh, the average growth uh, denoted here is 1666 in terms of the last five years. So we will go lower than this and uh, just try a few scenarios. Let's just go 8, 10 and 12 here and see what we're getting out of this, uh, which I think is uh, probably likely for the company to achieve for the next five years. They did great last year, they did 31%, which is amazing, of course, uh, but we need to be a little bit more conservative. The net income margins, and these are this is something that I love to see from a company. They are close to each other. There will be some years, like 2020 wasn't a great year for them, so it was 24%. And back in 2017, they had one which was less. But overall, they seem to be at around 30%, which I love to see. Again, uh, this kind of shows me stability from the, for the company's net income. Now, the margin at least. 20, 28, 29, and 30 is what I'm going to try here. And uh, the free cash flow margin, again, stability, very similar numbers to each other. 87, 85, 107, 101. This is about where you'd like to see it. And this is why I'm going 90, 100, and 110. Uh, for my free cash flow margins. Now remember, this free cash flow margin is not a margin compared to revenue, it's a margin compared to net income. So 100% actually means 29% pretty much in terms of its, the revenue growth, and that would be for the free cash flow over here. Now the annual return that I want to be achieving is 13%, is what I typically go for really. And when I hit calculate, let's see what we're getting. Now, as you would kind of expect, uh, this is still a, an expensive company. It looks like it's a pretty nice company that uh, I would definitely potentially love to own here. I would like to own, 
but uh, it's at a very expensive price, uh, 225 right now. It's going to be a little bit less, I believe. So it is 225, and uh, the medium one is probably where I would uh, be. I would want to get this company at, which is looking near maybe 90 to 100 bucks, really, maybe somewhere in between these levels. And uh, the, yeah, the current price is showing at 224, but remember we're having a pre-market drop, so it's going to be practically speaking 200 is where we are right now on the pre in the pre-market. And so still, we would require a, a pretty, pretty steep decline here of about 50% for me to make sense, uh, for, for it to make sense for me to, to purchase right now. Because uh, otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be paying a lot for this company and I don't want to do that. Yeah, you guys kind of got the hint here and it looks like it's following up on uh, the actual analysis here. It is a great company, it seems to be doing well. I like the fact that they don't have a lot of debt as well. But uh, for the price that they are actually trading at right now, it is still expensive and I cannot see myself adding some uh, over here. But it's a it's an interesting company to at least have in uh, as a shortlist and maybe see what they're doing in the next few uh, quarters or so. Maybe they get a, a deeper discount and it may be worthwhile adding some to a portfolio. But it would need a much, much steeper decline and it's already down about 40%. I don't know how how far how far more how, mu how much more it will go down. We'll, we'll see, I guess, in the upcoming uh, months or so. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this analysis, uh, and if you did, uh, of course, remember to leave a like, that uh, tremendously helps. And um, become a subscriber uh, if you are not a subscriber already. And remember, you can also subscribe, subscribe to this too by becoming a patron. Links in the description box below this video. Thank you for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.